Our ministry is Cecil and Lisa Paxton Ministries, and we're from Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we do quite a bit of traveling all around the world. We've got offices overseas as well in the United Kingdom there for Europe, and years ago, something like, oh, I don't know, maybe 14, 15 years ago, when an Irish prophet called us out prophetically and speak over us and say, come, come to England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, come and claim your inheritance, was part of the prophetic word, and every time we go, we just see God do awesome things. So Europe, God's opened many, many, many nations unto us. We've been in Russia many times and many of the other European countries as well as France and as far out as, um, well, Israel and Lebanon and, and uh, Malta and Spain and many other nations. So in many other countries have opened up into us and there's even more now. So God very much uh, in giving us the offices he did overseas as well as here in the U.S. has the uh, desire for us to reach more people because the... Um, well, I'll just real quickly share with you, the offices he gave us overseas was very unique in the sense that it was a businessman that the Lord spoke to his heart to give space to a Christian ministry. And at the time, you know, us establishing facilities in another country just wasn't physically possible. But this man had many different uh, businesses throughout many different nations, and um, there in Europe, this office is fully set up to take hundreds of telephone calls uh, a day. They spent something like maybe, I don't know, about 30,000 American dollars establishing um, their own telephone line clear out to a rural area in England. And it's amazing that normally you would not find a facility out in a lovely area that can take that type of volume of calls. And so I believe God's going to be releasing us not only here, but overseas as well. And so my background, for those of you that um, aren't familiar, my wife and I, um, we've um, well, I'll go back to the beginning for myself. I'm a PK kid. In other words, my dad was a preacher. I came up in church. My wife, she, um, that her testimony is back there on the table. And my wife basically uh, grew up heathen. Man, she had a stepfather that said none of her kids will ever step foot in a church. Her salvation experience was supernatural. It was out in the middle of nowhere. She was out in the middle of a uh, hay field out on the farm. And it was like, God, if you're really real, it's now or never. And he's real. Boy, he, and she had an older sister that was, what could have been like a mother because her family is so large and so many years between them. And that sister had become born again, was praying for her, heard from God, and knew in her heart what God was going to do. It came back home knowing what God was going to do in her life. And sure enough, out in the middle of that hayfield, she had a supernatural experience with God. She experienced his presence. She experienced his power. And her salvation experience was just awesome. Boy, the power of God hit her. Her feet flew off under her. And boy, she, she had such a wonderful experience when God just set her free. That was just the beginning for her of coming into her relationship with Jesus Christ and experiencing God in power. Praise God. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit for her was with power and when she started praying in other tongues, she did not know what it was. She thought she'd lost her ability to speak in English. Her sister heard this, knew that God had done what he spoke to her and said he was going to do, came over and started sharing with her in English exactly what had happened. And as soon as her natural mind had understanding, then, you know what? She started speaking in English again. And she got more excited about speaking in English than she did the praying in another language. <laughs> She thought she lost her ability to speak in English. And, her, and she said, I can speak in English. I can. And her sister looked at her and said, well, of course you can, stupid. <laughs> but praise God, it was supernatural. But you see, coming up in ministry for us has been different than my father in the sense that, yes, I've had a, quite a bit of schooling, degrees, and different things. But the fact is, I've come up through the, through the avenue of the parachurch ministry, working for several different ministries. And the last ministry where I was at for 10 years was um, Andrew Womack's ministry. So if you're familiar with this ministry, then, then uh, you know as a teacher, it's very strong in his heart as the revelation that God's given him, the love of, of God and the grace of God in the body of Christ. And so that was the third avenue, third place where God released us full, out into full-time ministry from there, even though for years we had been ministering out overseas. Now in this last seven years, we've been consistent around the U.S., and the Lord spoke about two years ago that he wanted us to go on television. And we're doing a lot. We, you know, we're coming on seven years averaging being home two months out of the year. So we do a lot of traveling. Our car, we're already on our second vehicle, and our other vehicle, the engine, just went out in December. We had almost 300,000 miles, and 
they tell me that the car we're driving now can do half a million and I'll probably find out. <laughs> so, so we do quite a bit of driving, not counting the flying we do. And here and then overseas as well when we're overseas and ministering in, in the nations and the countries there as well. In fact, just this last year we've been over to Holland, we've been over to England, Ireland, Scotland, and, and Wales. And um, even now we've got some of the Eastern Bloc countries waiting just so they can schedule them in to come and minister. And, but we're going to be on television around the United States. And what, from what the Lord spoke, he said this to me. He said, uh, and he spoke through Andrew and then through two other pastors who they didn't all know each other and that's when really God gets your attention where he wants you to do something and, and going on television for me wasn't about me it's about reaching people for Jesus and I believe that the truth he's put within our heart is very practical for the body of Christ because you see coming up in ministry for me being different than my father was this for me getting results in prayer is very very important and then teaching in the, to the lives of students in preparation for ministry because if you think about colleges and you think about school students in preparation for ministry many of them get a lot of information imparted to them a lot of knowledge given to them a lot of biblical information but many times especially if they have no practical ministry experience they'll come out of school and they'll be learning for the first time on the job so to speak practicing on us in the body of Christ how to minister Putting those truths into practice so that they're not just intellectual information because until that truth, the knowledge of God's Word becomes understand to your heart, it doesn't really belong to you. It's not really yours. Until we change, until the Spirit of the Lord shows it to us, it doesn't become ours. See, that's one of the dangers in the body of Christ is this. You'll come to a seminar like today. You'll hear information. You may walk away and you may like what you heard and you may feel like that you have something and because you heard it, you might even say, well, I heard that, I know that. But in reality, it's not yours until it reaches your heart with understanding. Until you can see all the pieces of the puzzle, until it's practical for your life, until you get results, then it doesn't become yours. Getting results is very, very important. Jesus got results. His disciples got results. And when they didn't get results, they came back to Jesus to find out why. We have an example of that in Scripture. And they were trained by the best. Jesus, he was a minister's minister. He knew what he was doing, and he got wonderful results. And he's our example today because we're disciples of Christ. So we go back to the areas and Scriptures that's recorded about his life especially right now as I'm focusing on the area of his ministry and how we minister. We'll back, go back and get our example from Jesus because Jesus, he was a minister's minister. He got results and the things that were recorded in scriptures are exactly there for our benefit. John's Gospel tells us that um, my, he, he said that if all the things that Jesus did was recorded, I suppose there wouldn't be enough books to contain it all. And so Jesus did a lot more than what is actually physically recorded. But I believe what was recorded by the Spirit of God as he spoke through men was very important. In fact, I think it's exactly what we need. I don't believe there's anything lacking in God's Word. I think there's everything there that we need to give us the insights that are necessary to be effective ministers, to be able to minister and pray for people and, get, and to get results. In all aspects of ministry, and of course I know in the calling of my life, this area of healing is an area that I'm called to. And I teach in a number of other areas as well, but this is, this is a predominant area for me. So imparting practical truths into the body of Christ so that when we pray we can get results, that's an important area. That's something that's strong in my heart as a minister. And anybody can do what I'm doing. If you put me up on a pedestal and make me something I'm not, that's only detrimental to your heart. In fact, I'll say this, I believe Jesus wants to work through the body of Christ as a whole. Amen. I believe he wants to work through every single one of us, and it's going to take all of us to get the job done because there's people to reach for him. You know, I'm not an end-time teacher, but I do have one CD over there titled The Return of the Lord. And I did that simply because of what the Lord spoke to me back in the beginning of my marriage a little over 25 years ago for two weeks every morning when I woke up. And at that time, that was a new experience for me. I had never had that kind of experience before where I heard his voice every morning when I woke up. I heard the same thing before. You know, when you're just first waking up before you collect your thoughts. He said this. He said, I'm coming back soon. He said the same thing every day for two weeks. And, you know, after two or three weeks of hearing that, after two weeks of hearing and after two or three weeks of not hearing that, my heart hardened. 
If you don't keep the things that God speaks to you, the experiences you have with him, if you don't keep them fresh on the inside, if you don't take the time to really get them deep down within your heart, then you know, time can pass. We can just get simply busy in life. We can consume our heart with other things in life, the natural things that we're just everyday life that we do. And we can become insensitive to the Holy Spirit. We can begin to have doubt and unbelief. We can begin to wonder, like I did, did, did God really do that? Did I, I mean, did he really say that? Because after some time passed, that was a new experience for me. I was not used to hearing in that manner and hearing that way. And so the next morning, he said the same thing again. And that time I said, I heard and I heard clearly and I've kept it as fresh today as it was then. Praise God, held on to it. But you see, that's, 20, that's a little over 25 years ago that the Lord spoke that to me. And no one knows the timing, but you see, I'm not an end time teacher, but the Lord here just a while back put that very strong in my heart because you see, there's been other people he's been speaking to as well, not just me. And one of them, I've got the testimony on there of a young, young boy, young lad that um, just, I think, nine or ten years old, that he wasn't, um, he was too timid to get up and share in front of everyone. But he had a supernatural experience with the Lord, where the Lord spoke to him and actually showed him his return. And the thing that was, well, the, from listening to everyone and, and myself and what God's been communicating, what the Lord is saying I believe that the proper response for us and what he's communicating to us in the body of Christ is not an end time mentality in the sense that we have this escape mentality to get out of here. I believe that the Lord in everything he's been communicating, when you look at everything, I believe that there's something for us to do. There's a work to be accomplished. There's people to reach for him. It's not about just getting out of here. I believe that why the Lord is communicating so much is that he's trying to get our attention in the body of Christ because there's people that need to be reached for him. You see that young lad, the young boy that the Lord spoke to, the thing that stood out the most out of the whole experience and everything he experienced and, and seeing Jesus return and everything he was seeing on the earth with uh, the, the steam shooting out of the ground and, and just look, it, it was like it was an earthquake everywhere and how the believers were being taken up. But you see, the thing that impressed him the most was this. And the thing that impacted his heart was the people being left behind. It bothered him deeply. It, because kids his own age were being left behind and it bothered him deeply that they were being left behind because they were crying out. And I believe that was the purpose of the experience that he had with the Lord was that the Lord was impressing something upon his heart. I believe the young man has got a calling in his life. I believe God is going to use him powerfully. But I believe God was making something very, very real to his heart. But it was so strong in his heart, he wanted his mother to, and she arranged a time with me, and I thought I was going to be ministering to him personally, but it turned out this is what he wanted to share with me. He wanted me to tell others. I believe there'll come a time where he'll share. But you see, I tried to encourage him. Even his mother said, well, he'll be with you. You can get up for everybody and share. But he was just too timid at that age. And he said this to his mom. He said, but mom, Moses had somebody speak for him. <laughs> My, but you know, praise God, I believe the time will come that he'll be boldly sharing. But I believe Jesus is speaking and, there, and there's a purpose. There's something he wants to accomplish in our lives. We need, that he wants to work through us in the body of Christ. Until we establish our hearts fully, then the problem is going to be this. You try to accomplish in the arm of the flesh what he does by the Spirit. You try to do it in your own strength. And your own strength will only go so far. We've had so much of that in the body of Christ where people try to reach others, witness and, and pray for others. And we, many times we do it out of a proper motive of the heart, proper intent of the heart in the sense that we care about people. But I'm telling you that we can, we can minister with a dependency on his life from within. We can minister with a dependency on the Holy Spirit and the Lord. He can work in us and he can work through us. And we can come to a place where it comes natural. Come to a place where, in fact, I'll say this. I'll tell students this. I'll say, if ministry is hard, you're in the way. You're making it harder than it really is. It should be fun. It is. I enjoy myself when I minister to people because, you see, it's not about me. It's not about me performing. It's not about me, about me trying to do something. Man, I remember the first time in ministry where I came to a place where I was depending more on His life, more on the Spirit of God from within than myself. I was given a limited amount of time to minister to people. I found myself, my heart, crying out to God saying, because my perception was this. I don't have enough time to help these people. Their needs are so great. And I was given a limited amount of time. And all of a sudden, I stopped depending on myself 
to try to do it because it forced me to come to a place where I was depending on him. I said to God, I said, I said, God, I don't have enough time to help these people. You've got to do it through me. And it was like, duh. <laughs> That's what he wanted all along. Be learned to stop depending on myself. In fact, that was the beginning of seeing consistency. That was just the beginning of seeing one person after the other, one healing manifest after the other. That was the beginning of the things that God did by the Spirit of God where people would have questions and the answers would just fly out by the Spirit of God. And it was just Jesus speaking through me. And it was, there was times that it was like, wow, take my ear off and listen to my own mouth. That's good. It ministered to me. Man, I'll tell you what, Jesus, he'll make you look good. Because you see, as a minister, it's very real in my heart. I know that he just lets us be a part of what he's doing in the earth. We make it hard when we get in the way. We make it hard when it's about us. My learning to connect to his life from within is what I'm talking about. And that's, these are some areas that is very strong in my heart as a minister because you see, even though I'm ministering there of healing, I'm different than an evangelist because I'm a teacher. So I'm called in this area, but an evangelist, Lord, I've sent under many wonderful evangelists. I got my wife and I here just a, a year or two ago, got to send under an evangelist that one of the old boys that overseas has been ministering for years and years and years. And just it's wonderful to sit under their, their ministry because of the years of experience and what the Spirit of the Lord has taught them. But, <clears throat> you know, as a teacher, I, it's strong in my heart to take truths and teach others. Practical insights in the area of ministries because you can do what I could do. Your heart just needs understanding. And it's a process. How long it's going to take for us to establish our hearts in truth really depends upon us because you see all of us are uniquely different. As a minister, I minister around the world. I minister in many nations. I minister in many countries. And, you know, I've discovered years ago that not everybody thinks like Americans. <laughs> My. And... People, different nations, different countries, they just got different ways of seeing things, different belief systems established within their hearts, different perceptions on how they see life and what life communicated to them. In fact, even within this, within this culture, within this country, we're, we're all uniquely different. Some of us have sent our different teachings. We come out of different backgrounds and, and sometimes are come out of different types of churches. Some of us, male, female, child, adult, we haven't all gone through the same experiences in life. We've had different, and sometimes, well, some of those experiences can challenge you in your heart, especially when you experience something that challenges what you believe, the truth that you believe in God's Word. And you're experiencing something that's contrary to what you believe, and, you know, it, you have to process through that. There's people that have been believing God for truth in His Word and promises and didn't see His faithfulness. Instead, what they experienced was just the opposite sometimes, and it can challenge your faith. And... In fact, I'll say this, I believe that uh, in ministry, and I'm going back now over the years as long as, um, as there's any type of recordings, and, but I believe that in ministry throughout the, the years, I believe there's a lot more ministers that should have been, should have been operating in a power than, than what do. I believe that in ministry that many of us sometimes can pull back into a comfort zone especially if we had wrong experiences. We have challenging experiences that, that just have a challenge on us and we don't see the faithfulness and we don't understand why and it will ca cause us to pull back in a comfort zone where in ministry we operate in a place where we can feel comfortable, where we feel like we're in control. And I'll, play, I, I'll tell you, there's a place in ministry when your heart gains understanding where you realize that it's, in a sense it's like you're walking on water. You're not in control. You think about water, water cannot hold your weight. That will mess with your head walking on water. <laughs> I, I know what it feels like to walk on water. I had a dream years ago where I was walking on water. My feet only went in half an inch into the water. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, you're learning to walk on water. And that will mess with your head because water can't hold your weight. You're not in control. Why? I got to, when I was over in Russia, I got to see not just a few, a whole group, of, and not even small stream. We're talking about a huge river. I saw them walk across the entire river. Now, I even got pictures. Now, it was 40 below zero. So. <laughs> it did make a difference. <laughs> oh, praise God. I got to have a little fun. I can't get too serious. <laughs> My... But we do have examples, of course, in the scriptures, Jesus and Peter, 
and examples in everyday life. There, um, if you've read the book Like a Mighty Wind, then you know the man by the name of, I think, Mel Tari. Uh, he and a whole group of people walked on water and they weren't, they didn't even realize what they were doing. They were taking the gospel into, I think it was Indonesia, into other villages. And it was in the rainy season, it was supernatural what they experienced. A businessman following along behind them for safety was about maybe 100 feet or 100 yards, whatever it was, behind them. And he saw them go through the stream. He thought there was no problem. It wasn't that deep. He stepped into it and he almost drowned. Almost lost everything. It was just supernatural. So if there's a purpose and a reason, it's possible. Praise God. Amen. My, it's supernatural. It's not God. But see, the point I'm trying to make in ministry is this. There's a place where you're not depending on yourself. There's a place where we've got more dependency on Him than we do ourselves. We don't realize in our heart how much by living in this physical flesh suit, we can learn to trust according to the five senses, learn to trust in self. And, well, Proverbs 3, 5. Trusting not in thy own understanding. Leaning not. Trust. What we lean, what we rely on. What we trust in. Boy, we can get so used to living in this physical flesh suit that we really rely on ourselves. We really trust in self and we don't realize what we're doing. It comes so subtle. You see, there's so many believers in the body of Christ that are trying to believe God. They're trying to receive a promise from Him and they're trying to. But you see, anytime you're trying to receive something that's already been given to you in Christ. In fact, I'll say it this way, first of all. I'll say this, that God has no trouble giving Man, we've always had trouble receiving. We've always been the problem. He's not the problem. And that's actually good news because we can change. We can. We can establish His ways to the place that when it comes to receiving, receiving actually gets easy and not hard. There's some Christians in the body of Christ that have been prayed for many, many times. And when it comes to receiving this area of healing, and I know there's, of course, many promises, but I'm focused right now on the aspects of receiving a physical manifestation of healing in your body. When it comes to receiving from Him, we receive, and we don't realize it, we're receiving because of us. We're receiving because we have a problem. Now, to us, that's a very good reason to receive. That makes really good sense to us. It does, because there are some physical issues that are challenging. There's some physical problems that <clears throat> challenge us so deeply that it just seems like they don't go away. The kind, some, some, kind of pro, some kind of physical issues, some physical issues, they, you just live with them. And they dominate your life. Like one lady that was in her 30s I ministered to with migraine headaches. And she, she's lived with those for years and years and years and years and years. She knows everything about that migraine. In fact, she owns the problem. There's many Christians that own their physical issues. You know what I mean by owning something? It's a way of life. It belongs to you. It's yours. It's in your heart. You know everything about it. And you, you know exactly. In fact, I'll use her as an example. The moment the pain would start, she knew exactly how long she had until she had to be home because if she was driving a car, she could get to, within a certain amount of time, she could come to the place where it was not even safe for her to drive. She couldn't even think straight. It dictated life to her. She knew that she could not leave, live, um, she couldn't leave home like other people could and go on trips the same way they could by herself. She couldn't depend on herself in that sense because her physical body, the moment that migraine came, she knew how much time she had until it just brought her to the place where she, she had to be home. And so our physical issues, they can communicate to us you can learn all, a person's lived with physical issues and problems for years knows everything about them. They've been communicating to us in our heart. And see, the danger is this. They determine what reality is to us. They determine what truth is to us in our heart. They communicate so much to us through our five senses. What we touch, taste, smell, see, and hear. And we live in this physical flesh suit. People that experience pain, that is communication because you can feel it. And you, to you, it's real. It's like you feel it. It's real. It's there. You're the one having to deal with it and it can get real in a hurry when there's physical pain. And this is what I'm talking about because you see, we, we receive because there's a problem. 
we have a problem and we're looking to God as to take it away. We, we're looking to him is that you need to give me something. There's something I don't have. And in the body of Christ, one of the greatest problems we have is receiving from our position in Christ. And that messes with our heads. It's the same as walking on water in a sense because it doesn't make sense to us that, hold it, you mean I'm re trying to receive something I've already got? It's like tilt, tilt, that doesn't make sense. But you see, Jesus, before we were born, provided healing for us. He paid the price. Every single physical issue, everything, every area, the Father put it all on him. Matthew 8, 17, he bore infirmity and our sickness on the cross. He did. He suffered terribly. The Father put this on him. Now, my position in Christ is that this physical problem has no right to my body. But you see, on the other hand, if we've learned to live with it, our problems, we can own them. They can belong to them. We identify with them to the place that they dominate our heart. They do take life to us, what truth is to us. Our physical issues on the inside can be very, very real to us. And then the person that's trying to receive from God from that position, they are looking to him to give them something they do, that they already have. They're looking to him like, you need to, I, I need to be healed. That's, so many believers, that's their perception. Every time, even when they come to receive prayer, that's how they see it. That's their perception. It's like, I need something. There's something I do not have. I want to tell you something. You've got the life of Christ dwelling within you. You've got his presence on the inside. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit at salvation. 1 Corinthians 3.16. You know, the difference between us and the early church in the beginning with the disciples in Acts chapter 2, when they experienced the supernatural manifestation of the Holy Spirit at that time, was that the Holy Spirit was sent to the earth for the first time. For them, it was an external experience. He came from the outside in. But for you and I, we receive the Holy Spirit salvation. Our body becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit salvation. And then, Matthew 3, 11, Jesus is a baptizer. When we ask him to baptize us, for us, for them, it was external. It came from the outside. For us, from within, he comes upon us, fills us, clothes us with Dunam's miracle working power. Now, this power is what we're talking about. It, walking in, experiencing it, but receiving when we're trying to receive from our position in self, we don't realize the, the effect that has upon our heart. In fact, we don't realize the condition of our heart many times because, you see, when you're connected through the carnal, Romans chapter 8, verse 6, to be carnally minded produces death. Is death. Be carnally minded, actually, if you look at the word death, you can, you can get an understanding of what it's talking about going back to Romans 8, 2. In Romans 8, 2, it's talking about the spirit of the law of life that is in Christ Jesus, which hath set us free from the law of sin and death. Now, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, this, the thing about the life that's in Christ is that it's called a spirit. The law of sin and death is not called a spirit. Because it's, it's, see, the law of sin and death is this connection that we have through our physical flesh suit to this natural world. You think of a baby, you know, I, we, while we were in Atlanta, just here ministering, as Larry was talking about the college there, um, got to stay with my family, and um, one of the nephews, uh, they, they had their first child uh, while I was there this last week, and so um, um, we were there for that. And you look at a baby, and how cute a baby is, but you know, a baby becomes a teenager, teenager becomes an adult, adult becomes a mature adult, and eventually this physical flesh that goes back to the grave. We don't need it anymore. We're free to be asked from, from this body, always oh, be in the presence of the Lord. I'm talking about those of us that are in Christ. We carry his presence. We carry his life. But this natural law of sin and death that we live in, boy, we're not unbelievers. In the body of Christ, we carry his presence. We carry his life. We're not like somebody in the world that doesn't have his presence on the inside of us. But you see, that's exactly how a lot of Christians live their Christian walk. With a dependency on self. Trying to live for God. Trying to do what's right. Just trying to do, be the best Christian they can. This is why even when it comes to life's challenges, many times we try to overcome 
because it's a challenge and we're trying to overcome it. And we don't realize how we're depending on ourselves when we do that. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 2. Scripture tells us two different places there. I'll, I'll, I'll mention there and just touch on them for right now. But we, Scripture tells us we always, we always triumph. Another place in Scripture, all the, prom the promises of God tells us that they're all what? Well, that's not true. I didn't quote the entire Scripture. I just kind of touched on the Scriptures. But you see, all the promises of God are not yes and amen because there are believers in the body of Christ that are not experiencing the promises. There are believers in the body of Christ that do not always triumph. See, I didn't quote all the Scripture. I just touched on the Scriptures. But you see, if you go back and look at the Scriptures, you'll find that both of them says in Christ. All the promises of God are yes and amen. That is, in Christ. Now what does it mean to receive from our position in Christ? Because if you're trying to receive because of you, that's a good reason for us. It's like, yeah, I need this problem gone. It's bad. And we identify with the problems in our heart to the point that they're real, but we're trying to trust God. We're trying to overcome when in reality our position in Christ is that we're already an overcomer because he did it for us. Even salvation, I'll, I'll take the same principle and expound on it some more from this perspective. Salvation. You know, my wife's office, she's got this huge map of the entire world and she loves it. And, and I was looking at it one day and oh, is that, the Spirit was just showing me as I was looking at it. You know, every nation, every country, every place in the world. We very much have, a, have an international focus, but you see, people of all nations. Jesus. The Father gave us Christ and Jesus. He gave his life and he paid the price for the entire world. And that's, a, that's the greatest gift that we've ever received is Jesus. And that really tells us a lot about our Heavenly Father, his character, his nature, the fact that he gave us his Son. That, that's a form of communication, even as it was something that was accomplished for a man to bring us back into relationship with him because that shows us a lot about his heart. Romans 5 eight. Man, he loved us even while we were yet sinners, the kind of love he had for us that was love that wasn't based on us. It was a demonstration of his heart, his character, his nature, and who he was. To the entire world, he's given every single one of us Jesus. To all of us, he's given us Christ. Now, not all men have received, but Jesus has been given to the entire world. Every single person on this planet, Jesus paid the price for. Salvation has already been given to every person, but see, the point I'm trying to make is this. Not every person has received the gift. Not every person has responded correctly from their heart because there's, there's, with many, there can be something else that's already truth and reality to them. A way of believing, a belief system, a way of seeing life, what truth is to them. And for them, when they hear about Christ, that's why Jesus, accepting Christ is a work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is involved. It doesn't just involve the intellect. Because if it was just intellectual information, then you could hear something better the next day and think that that's better. I'm telling you, in, in your born again experience, it involves the Holy Spirit. He bursts the life of Christ within you and you're different. We're a new creation in Christ. We're different. And that's the beginning of our heart changing, even as in our spirit now, his presence dwells within us. We've come alive to him. We're a new creation. And he, there also is a work of the spirit in our heart that enables us to receive from him. There's the beginning of that change. Now, people accepting Christ, receiving him, Jesus being given to the entire world, but <clears throat> not all men receiving. I'm telling you, it's the same in the atonement. The price was paid for our physical healing as well. Healing has been given to every single person, but we're talking about people's ability to receive. And that's my mom. I'm not here. <laughs> oh. We're talking about every person's ability to receive. You see, we're talking about something that's been given. Even as salvation has been given to all men, sometimes people have trouble receiving. Sometimes people have something else within their heart that's truth to them. Something else that's reality and truth and the way they see it. And, you know, you can see in Hebrews chapter 4 where the scripture tells us that the gospel was preached to all 
but not all was capable of mixing it with faith. They all heard the same thing. The same thing was said to every single person, but you see, not everybody heard the same thing. Because that truth, the inability to take what they hear and the ability of their heart to mix it with faith. In other words, faith being the ability of our heart to trust God and have confidence in Him. To take a hold of the truth of God's Word and through the work of the Holy Spirit for it come alive on the inside. When there's something else deep on the inside that's already truth to us, then we can hear, but sometimes, depending upon the condition of our heart, will determine exactly how long that process is going to be or whether or not we're even capable of receiving in the, in the first place because... We can hear, but not hear. We can hear the word, but it's like, no, no, no. There's always something else, and we've got our challenge. We've got our areas of beliefs. And the process we go through where the Holy Spirit speaks that truth to us, and we go through change. You know, it could be a longer process for some than for others. But just initially receiving right now is what I'm focusing on. The condition of man's heart in receiving from him. God has no trouble giving, but you see... Man's had trouble receiving, but when we receive from our position from self, that's when we get into trouble. When we're trying to receive because we got a problem. We're trying to receive because we identify with the issue. We're trying to receive because it's like, I need this. Anytime I'm at the center where it's about me, well, I got my eyes on me, <clears throat> I'm going to be in trouble. Receiving is going to get hard going to get difficult when receiving is about me but on the other hand when it's about him I'm telling you we always triumph in Christ but Christians do not always triumph and I believe that you go back to every single situation I know as a minister every time I minister a person where they're not experiencing the faithfulness of God they're not triumphing you will always find the problem rooted in self it's because of us. We've got our eyes on ourselves. In fact, I'll say this, that all unbelief, I believe it's rooted in us. It's about us. Fear. You know, when you, we experience things in life that are contrary to the truth of His Word, and we go through circumstances that challenge us, produce fear on the inside, where fear becomes a way of life, gets deeper within the heart gets on the inside, then there's a root of fear. There's something within us that we want good, but our heart's in a condition where we expect bad. We can experience circumstances in life that can devastate us sometimes. And, and there's been Christians that have, um, my, gone through things that have just challenged them and how they believe what truth is to them. Had a deep effect upon their heart. <clears throat> and even if it's had a deep effect upon their heart, my, they're trying to trust God. They're trying to believe Him. In fact, I'll say it this way. There's Christians that... Um, when it comes to receiving, their heart's in a condition where they actually live with fear. Fear actually becomes a way of life for some believers. You know, I'm, I, and when I'm teaching students and training students, I help them to understand that um, in ministry, this is one of the major areas they're going to be ministering into. There's several categories that are major areas in ministry that you always minister into because predominantly ministering throughout many nations and countries and people, you'll find that there's, there's areas that in the, well, categories that you're constantly going to be ministering into because they're categories that where lots of needs come out of people's hearts. One of them is this area I'm talking about today, this area of healing, area of health and healing. This is why in the, in the world, look how many uh, companies, pharmaceutical companies, look how many health companies, look, look at the kind of money they're making. They wouldn't be advertising on television if they weren't making money. There are some millions of dollars going into all different types of areas of health because in the body of Christ it, you know, and in the world as a whole, in people's lives, health is an issue. That's a major category. And there's lots of different areas within that one category of health. But the area of finances. You know, as a minister ministering into, the, into people's lives, people need jobs, people need cars, people experience lack, people get into debt, people have problems. Their challenges. That's you know in ministry, especially if you're a pastor, then that's an area that in many, in many under that category of finances, you you come across all different types of needs, different needs coming out of people's hearts at different times. It's an area we minister into in, in a lot. Another major area would be relationship. 
issues. It's a major category because people have all different types of problems in, under this particular type of category. You've got marriage problems, you've got relationship issues, work issues, you've got family issues, all different types of relationship types of issues, divorces, all different types of problems, challenges in life. And so in ministry, establishing our hearts in preparation to minister in these areas are essential because people in the world have these problems as well. They're challenged in these areas. To prepare our heart to minister in these different areas, and there's many different other areas, of course, salvation and, and the baptism, other areas we can minister that's very, very important. You know, your ability to minister to someone that's suicidal. That's important, but you probably won't come across that as much as you do the other areas. If, you know, it's like if one of our students was going to be in the position of pastoral and that was a major area they're ministering into, there'd be a problem. It's like everybody in the church wants to kill themselves. It's like, what's wrong with this? That's just not the norm. It just doesn't happen that way. Hmm. But it is an area that we can prepare our heart to minister into. Many different areas, many different categories. But you see, we're talking about receiving. And when any of these issues are in our heart, and they dominate our heart and what truth is to us, then there's going to be an inability of our heart to have trouble receiving from God. And we're talking about man's ability to receive. I'm just kind of introduced this and touched on it. But I've introduced something very important. When it comes to receiving, if we try to receive from any other position than our position in Christ, then we may find ourselves at a place that the only time we can receive is when God actually does it for us. And there are times in our life that we, we experience miracles in the body of Christ. There are wonderful testimonies. God supernaturally does things for us that bypass our hearts. But if you've been in ministry in any length of time or you've been around believers long a time ministering like, like I have and I'm sure some of you here have, then you'll, you'll find that there's, there are people in the body of Christ whose hearts are not fully established in God's word and his ways. And they still experience God and his faithfulness at times, but there's a whole bunch of times they have difficulty receiving from him. And sometimes when people receive, it is a miracle when it, because you see, miracles have the potential of bypassing our heart. There's times we need a miracle. And if that's what we need, then and it's nothing wrong with receiving a miracle. But see, I believe that in the body of Christ, if we'll establish our hearts in his truth and his ways, it's at this place that we can begin to see consistency. Where we walk in the fullness of who we are in Christ, the fullness of what he's accomplished for us at the cross, it's at this place you'll begin to see consistency in any particular area. We come to the place we understand how to receive. I'm telling you, we can, we can receive. There's more than one way. In fact, I'm going to touch on these today. But there's more in this one area of healing, there is more than one avenue that we can receive, more than one way that's been established. Today I'll introduce the, the area of receiving through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what that means. I'll talk about the second avenue. In fact, before I leave the first avenue, let me say this, that in that category I labeled many, I, I talk about many different aspects of receiving through that area of power. I, I, I lump in that area the, the things we see in Scripture as an example like Peter's shadow. You know, you think about somebody being healed through a shadow. I mean, if, you, if it had been advertised today that I was going to be showing up and you're going to come here, Cecil Paxton, and he has the shadow ministry. <laughs> and we're going to put the anointed spotlight up here and all you're going to have to do is walk through the shadow and you're going to be healed I mean you probably who knows you might be going flaky this is weird this is like this is off the wall what kind of weird thing am I getting into but you know what that's in scripture that is in the bible but that can challenge us that just does not make sense to us in the natural that's not something in our hearts that we can normally accept as being truth because that moves outside of a comfort zone for many of us. That's like not the norm. We've never experienced that. We don't understand that fully on how that happens. We can see it in Scripture and we know that it's there. But it can challenge us in our physical flesh suit. It can challenge our hearts because it's like, okay, I can accept, Father, I can accept you. And, and some, Well, I'll say it like this. Sometimes as Christians, we can put God in a box. And well, I'll tell you, he'll, he can bust in your box we put him in. Nah. And how we believe in our hearts. But this first avenue, 
um, of receiving through the area of the gifts and power and it's an important area that we understand how to receive through the avenue because if we don't understand how to receive through the avenue then there's an area where our heart may lack understanding and when the father is ministering to that avenue then you know we won't fully understand how to receive we'll sit there and be waiting for him to do something for us with our hearts lack understanding on, on how to really receive through the avenue the second avenue that I'm going to talk about today as well as, as and, and I'm going to finish laying this foundation for our position in Christ and receiving. But the second avenue that has been established is biblical scriptural that we can see that and in, in all of these you can see in the life of Christ, by the way. Jesus operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you, when he operated in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he was, a, he was a very effective minister, a very powerful minister when he operated in the area of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He got wonderful results. And, and you know, in ministry today, we can limit the Lord working through us, even through the area of the gifts. I'll give you examples of that, but, um, but you see, Jesus didn't. And he's our example. But the second avenue is operating our authority in Christ. And Jesus operated in authority. And every time you see Jesus operating in authority in Scripture, he, he, there's always some form of communication with man to one degree or another about their heart and how a person's believing. And and I guarantee you that Jesus had no unbelief. He was definitely not the problem. But I will say this, that in ministry, there are times that us as ministers, and that word, I'm using that word minister from the context of the word servant, whether you're called to the fivefold ministry or not, every single one of us in the body of Christ are ministers. All of us are servants. Any of us can see people saved. Any of us can pray for people for healing. In fact, all of us need to be ministering to people. In fact, even in the fivefold ministry, we're ministers. But you see, Jesus, he was a very effective minister and operating in authority when he prayed for people in authority it always involved the heart of the person as well as his heart and that's important to understand because you see we can limit as a minister we can actually be part of the problem if we're not careful when it comes to ministering to people our heart can lack confidence our heart cannot be fully established there could be unbelief in our heart there could be issues within our heart that limits we can have areas where we just well you can be challenged and I'll talk about this how you can be challenged by physical problems and issues and things that challenge us and it can create unbelief in our heart if we don't learn to protect and guard our heart and we can become part of the problem instead of the solution we can limit his life in being released in fact I'll, I'll touch on this and say this before I move on when I'm training students in the area of ministry I try to get them away from praying for people from that context. I, it's okay to say we're praying for the sick. There's not a thing wrong with that at all. But in reality, that's not really what we're doing. When it comes to the area of healing, you're not praying to the Father. So I try to get them to focus on the fact that they're releasing His life. They're releasing the anointing. They're releasing the virtue, the power, the life of Christ right into someone's physical body. And so just practice releasing his life stop praying for people because so many times when we when we have this context of praying for people we make it about us it's like we look at something and say, boy how am i going to do this oh this looks terrible this looks impossible we get in the way we make it about us and the moment we let that circumstance that situation into our heart then it has an influence in our heart and what truth is to us it paints a picture on the inside and it can hinder us and we can become part of the problem. It can produce unbelief. There, then we go to try to pray for the person, but we're trying to deal with our own heart. We're trying to fight our own heart. And we become part of the problem. We, we limit his life from being released. Now, when you're operating authority, the heart of the other person is the other half of the issue. The person's ability to receive. I'll give you examples of all these in Scripture. But the person's ability to receive is very, very important. But our ability as a minister to minister effectively so that we're not part of the problem is also very important. But let me go back to the first avenue of the gifts, operating in power in that area. The gifts of the Holy Spirit have the potential of bypassing the heart of the minister and the heart of the person receiving as well. Oh yeah, there could be unbelievers get healed through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. There could be, there could be people with serious issues of unbelief that could still get healed through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I do, I will say this from the perspective of a minister and the, knowing the value and the importance of God's word for the benefit of our heart. It's very, very important that we understand the value of the word for us to get into that truth that we need to hear because there's been a large percentage of Christians that have been receiving through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that's been losing their healing. And that has nothing to do with the Father. That has a lot to do with the condition of our hearts. 
Man, I'll, in fact, I'll say this. There is no place in Scripture, there's no example in Scripture of a person losing their healing. But, I, I'll show you a place where I believe it is an example. I'll show you a place where that one, in fact, I'll show you one place where if the person didn't do what Jesus said, then that person did. But I'll show you a place that I believe, I do not believe that person kept their healing. And the only reason we don't know that is that the scriptures follow Jesus. They don't follow the life of the person. I believe that the scriptures follow the life of the person, that everything I saw come out of this person's heart was not right. It's like, I'm here, I'm seeing all the wrong things. Uh, and Jesus warned that person. And I don't believe they took heed to that warning at all. And if we're disobedient to what he says, then, then he's not responsible. It's the choices we make in life. We get our own ways established on the inside where our heart's like a guidance system. It just directs which way we go because it's, it's what truth is to us. And especially if we have attitudes and issues on the inside, then, oh, I tell you what, we can, uh, we can do things to ourselves. It's not God doing anything to us at all. He's not the one responsible. We are. It's the choices and decisions we make in life. And, but we have a free will to choose. We can choose to establish His ways and walk in His ways, or we can walk in our ways. It's a choice. But I'll give you more insight into that area. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they have the potential of bypassing our heart. But God's Word is very, very valuable, very important for the benefit of our hearts. So that truth goes beyond intellectual information. There's actually change that comes on the inside where we can see it for ourselves, not because somebody else says so. Or there needs to be change on the inside of us. Because until we can see it for ourselves, then out of our own heart under pressure, we won't respond correctly. We'll just keep our ways, and without even thinking, we'll make our choices and decisions in life when we're under pressure. Because it's just a way of living life. It's the way we always do things. It's very, God's Word is very, very valuable and very important for the body of Christ as a whole. And Christians should not be losing their healing. I've got a teaching on why Christians lose healing, and it's to give an answer. But it just should not be happening in the body of Christ. I believe that it's a direct reflection of the condition of our hearts as a whole. That the fact that percentage-wise, I've heard it said that as much as 80% of the Christians lose their healing. Now, yeah, I have seen that different. You know where I see it different? When I come into local bodies and churches where pastors have been ministering God's Word, and it's true, it's real for the hearts of the people that are hearing. And that's why I see the percentage is different because, boy, they, they've got a hold of it in their hearts. I'm telling you, it's no reflection against ministers what I'm saying. This is a temperature reading of the body of Christ as a whole. The value and the importance of God's Word. As ministers, there's things we can't do for you. We can't fix you. There's areas where, you, where, where all of us, all of us are required to take a hold of that truth and go through the process of letting the Holy Spirit show it to us. That's not something we can do for you. No. Nah. Boy, letting the Holy Spirit be your teacher, that truth, and getting into the Word so the Word gets into us. Boy, praise God. Amen. Now, the third avenue that I'm going to talk about today of receiving. The third avenue, it's just simply between my heart and Jesus. It involves no other person at all. And how you receive a manifestation of healing in your physical body through this avenue. And I'm going to say this, that in this particular avenue, I believe every believer in the body of Christ needs to receive through that avenue at least once in their life, if not more. In fact, I'll qualify that by saying this. I believe that it, you should receive it, because I, I know people can receive something minor like a headache or something just, based, just between them and Jesus, but I'm talking about something that's challenging. Something that just seems like it just will never go away. You know, there's sometimes there's people that um, have physical issues that just seem like that no matter how many times they receive prayer, it just never goes. Or, or no matter, it just seems like that, um, my just, or, or like people that experience like the, what is it, the, the flu season, the bugs and the, and the things that go around. And people, I've heard it come out of their mouth. Boy, I know that as soon as it comes, I know exactly how long I have it. I know exactly how many days I'll be down. I know exactly, you know, they, man, they know everything about their physical problems. They know, they identify with that problem to the place that it, that it just, they own it. It's a way of life for them. It's in their heart. That means that physical issue has communicated them to the place that they identify with it. It's very, very real to them, and they just, you know, and they have their way of responding what they do to these issues, and, and uh, you know, when, but when you receive healing 
through something that's been challenging. Something that just seems like that no matter what, it just seems like it never works. It just seems like that I'll always get it. When you receive healing just between you and Jesus, with something that's challenging to your heart, it will change you. Oh, it'll change you. And you know, your response, if it's been challenging, might be this. You might go, you were lying to me. I thought you were so real. Oh, you were lying all along and I believed you. I'm talking about that physical issue, the challenge it had in our heart and how it was communicated to us. It can be very, very real in our heart and how we're believing because it can dominate us. It just seems like it just never goes away. It's just always there. And you'll discover just how much of a lie it was to your heart. Not only that, but when you receive through that avenue, if you're ever challenged in life again, even if it's a different physical issue, do you know you'll respond differently to the pressure? Initially, how you initially respond, you'll respond different. You'll be a different person because in your heart, you're already fully convinced. You experienced this faithfulness before just based on you and Jesus when no one else was involved. And, you know, you knew it was lying to you before. And now, when you get a communication coming to you again through another physical challenge, you'll receive quicker. You'll receive easier. It won't take as long to receive because your heart will change. You will remember his faithfulness. You will remember exactly. Your heart's different. You're different. You're a different person once you've gone through the process of his truth come alive on the inside and the Holy Spirit showing you things. And, and boy, when it, I'm telling you, when it becomes yours, the kind of truth you can walk in in everyday life that'll work in everyday life, when it becomes yours, then you're different. I'm going to show you and teach you today you know, that area, all three avenues on how you receive these avenues. Now, I may not have the length of time to go into the depth. I'd like to have got teaching that goes into more depth, but I'm going in. Well, in fact, let me just say this. You may think this is a, this is a long time today, but actually, sometimes when I've taught students, I've, I've gone as long as eight hours in a day. So I've got a lot I can teach. I've got a lot I can say. I can probably talk longer than you can listen. <laughs> praise God. But praise God. Let's take a break.